Well, Happy New Year from Chester Baptist Church, and may your new year be one of joy and contentment in the Lord. Well, today's lesson is from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, and we're going to be looking at verses 13 and 14 today. But first, maybe a little background. So while the book of First and Second Chronicles are two books in our Bible, that division is not original. Due to the scroll lengths, the book was divided into two, but it was written as one book with one coherent storyline. Now, in our English Bibles, Chronicles comes after the books of Samuel and Kings, and most of Chronicles is actually repeat content from those books. And so most modern readers, when they come to Chronicles, they think, hey, wait a minute, I just read, read all this, so they skip ahead. And that's a shame, because this book is really unique and important to the Bible story. Now, in the traditional Jewish ordering of the Bible, Chronicles is actually the last book because it summarizes all of the Jewish scriptures. The first word in the book, by the way, is Adam, which is the first character at the beginning of the story. And the last paragraph of Chronicles announces the return of Israel from exile. Now, we don't know who wrote the book or who can tell us the details within it that Chronicles was produced by someone who lived a couple of hundred years after the Israelites returned from Babylonian exile. And for this author, Jerusalem and the temple were rebuilt some time ago. And as we learned from the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, well, things weren't going very well at that time. Now, our section opens today and centers on the de dedication of the temple by Solomon. He has finished the dedication in the prayers to Yahweh. Fires come down from heaven and consume the sacrifices. And later that night, Yahweh appears to Solomon. And what does the Lord say to Solomon? We see that in starting in verse 13. Yahweh says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So, God's going to cause grout, droughts and famines and plagues? Well, that doesn't sound like a very nice God to me. So why would he do this? Well, it seems that his people had started down a path of wicked ways. Now, understand that droughts, famines, and plagues can be physical acts of nature, but they can also allude to metaphorical, psychological societal, and spiritual problems as well. So how does God's people stop these acts of God? Seems there are four things that need to happen. First, God's people need to humble themselves, or put them in a more contemporary sense, we Christians need to humble ourselves. Now, the word humble means to subdue one's pride and submit in self-denying loyalty to God then we are to pray. Now, in this context is a shameless acknowledgement of personal sin and a plea for God's mercy, much like that of David's prayer of repentance, as we find in Psalm 51, for example. Third, we're to seek his face. Now, the word seek is often used in desperate situations in which God is the only possible hope for deliverance. We see that, for example, in Deuteronomy 4. And finally, we had to turn from our wicked ways. Turn, and we're more uh, used to the word repent, is the Old Testament term that signifies a complete change of direction away from the sin and toward God. It's kind of a military word, like an about face, as we read in Ezekiel 18. But here's the thing that I find. For many Christians that use this verse as a prayer, it's the other guys who need to turn from their wicked ways. They need to change and follow God, just like us. But that's not what the Scripture says. It says, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin 
and heal their land. You know, personally, if, if I may, personally, I find that the word there is both personally and corporately recognized as singular and plural pronoun. Our behavior is not necessarily what God is expecting from us. So we pray for mercy, seek his face for a new start, and leave the sinful behavior behind. Think of it this way. When Michael Jordan first entered the NBA for the Chicago Bulls, in the first few games of that season, the Bulls were winning. Teams could not shut down Jordan. The Bulls won. However, when the Boston Celtics first played the Chicago Bulls that year, they let Jordan score his ton of points, and the Bulls lost. What did they do different? Well, they shut everyone else on the team down. Michael Jordan could carry a team, but he was not the team. In Christianity, for me, yes, there's an individual section to it. We are each given a, a task, a job, a goal by God for us to carry out. But we're also corporate. We are a church. We're a community. And so not only are we to carry out these tasks, but we're to do that in relationship to everyone else in that community, in that church. So when I read this scripture about turning our face, turning away from our, uh, our wicked ways and turning our face toward God, I see an individual component as well as a corporate component. So as we enter our new year this year, let us think about that. Where does God want me to be? And where does God want us to be? Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this most beautiful time. We enter a brand new year, a fresh start. But Lord, it is also a path with you that you have trod for thousands of years, leading the way, showing us what we need to do, showing us where we need to be. I ask, Lord, that this year, that you open our hearts, open the eyes of our hearts, that we can see the things that you do around us, see where you would wish us to go. Open our ears. Let us not just listen, but let us obey, as the word Shema means, to listen and to obey, that we may do the things that you would have us do and be the people that you would have us be. We ask all of this in Jesus Christ. Amen.